Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're going to be solving this interesting calculus question. Right, so based on the description of the question, this is the summary for the conditions. We have f of x, that is a cubic function with a leading coefficient of 1. Then we have g of x, that is integral from 0 to x, f prime t plus a times f prime t minus a, and dt. a has to be some positive number, and then your g of x, will have extreme values only at x is equal to 1 over 2 and 13 over 2. So another condition is f of 0 is equal to negative 1 over 2. What should be the value of? Now, a times f of 1. Okay, so based on those conditions, what we can do is maybe we can just think about your f of x in general. So f of x is already given to be a cubic function with a leading coefficient of 1. So that's why your f of x should be looking like x cubed plus something, which means f prime of x should be looking like 3 times x squared plus some terms. And then a is some positive number. And since your g of x is integral from 0 to x with those integral we can represent your g prime. So your g prime of x is going to be just equal to um, f of prime x plus a times f prime of x minus a. Okay, this has to be an expression of your g prime of x, right? Then maybe we can think about three possibilities of the graph of g of x. And at this time, question already said your g of x will have extreme values only at x is equal to 1 over 2 and 13 over 2. So let's think about the graph of g prime x, right? First one, we can think about this situation. Okay, so we should have two parabola, maybe looking like that. And of course, the one on the left has to be now f prime of x plus a. And then this one should be f prime of x minus a. But make sure your g of x has extreme values when x is equal to 1 over 2 and 13 over 2 only. So that's why there has to be two points of the sign changes. In this case, we have four points of the sign changes, right? This, 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 and that. So that's why this is not the case that we need to look for. Now the second case is, what if your g prime x, okay, it looks like just this. And then we have f prime of x plus a. This one should be f prime of x minus a. Still the same, we have four points of the sign changes, this, 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 and that. So that's why this is not the case we need to look for. Since g of x should have only two points of the sign changes, so that it will have extreme values only when x is equal to 1 over 2 and 13 over 2. So that's why the last case that should make sense has to be the situation. And then, okay. Of course, this has to be f prime of x plus a, and then this has to be f prime of x minus a. Okay. So in this situation, first of all, we have two points where your g of x will change its sign. This point and this point. Then we need to take a look at this point that is the middle. Question is, is g of x changing its sign at this point or not? The answer is no. Your g of x does not change its sign at this point. We can easily check, for example, at this point, right? Only at this point of the x, your f prime of x minus a. Okay, this has positive slope anyway. And then f prime of x plus a. Okay, negative sign. So that's why negative times positive, that is just a negative. So your g of x will have negative of the slope. And at the same time, right at this point too, your f prime of x plus a is positive. And then corresponding value for f prime of x minus a, this has negative. So plus times negative, okay, that is just a negative. So that's why in this area too, your g of x will have negative slope. So that is why your g of x does not change its sign right at this point. So that's why we will have only two points where your g of x will change its sign. These two points. Pretty sure this point has to be then when x is equal to 1 over 2. And then that point is then 13 over 2. Because of the symmetry, then this is going to be the midpoint of 1 over 2 and 13 over 2. That is going to be then 1 over 2 plus 13 over 2 divided by 2. That is just now 
7 over 2. 7 over 2 has to be the right this point. Then on top of this graph, we can maybe think about your f prime of just the x. f prime of just the x should be then looking like this. This one has to be just the f prime of x. So that we can get the value of the a. Because this is going to be the midpoint of these two points. And this is going to be the midpoint of these two points. So using the symmetry, we can get the value of the a. Since a has to be this distance or this distance. So that's why we can calculate the value of the a. So a has to be now 13 over 2. Minus 7 over 2 first. This is now equal to 6 over 2. And then you just need to multiply 1 over 2 to it. So that's why 3 over 2 should be the value of the a. Okay, so the value of the a is now equal to 3 over 2. Okay, since we already got the value of the a, that is 3 over 2, right? Which has to be just the distance or this distance. Same thing as this distance as the a and that distance as the a2. That means we can get exact x value at these two points. So that we can complete your function for f prime x, right? So this point has to be the midpoint between these two. So that's why the midpoint between 1 over 2 and 7 over 2 is going to be 4 over 2, which is equal to 2. Same thing, this point is going to be the midpoint between 7 over 2 and 13 over 2. That is going to be 10 over 2, which is 5. Okay, so that's why your f prime x will have the factor of x minus 2 and x minus 5. So your f prime of x, it should have x minus 2 and x minus 5 factor. But then again, we already have your f prime x. f prime x should be looking like 3x squared plus some terms. That means your leading coefficient has to be equal to 3. All we need to do is multiply 3 from the outside. Okay, so if you distribute, then we have 3 times x squared minus 7, x plus 10. Also distribute, then we have 3x squared uh, minus 21x, and then plus 30. Okay, this is your f prime x, which means your f of x is going to be antiderivative of this. We have now then x cubed, and then minus 21 over 2x squared, plus 30x now plus c. Now we can use this condition, f of 0 is equal to negative 1 over 2. That means your c value is equal to negative 1 over 2. Okay, so we just complete your f of x. x cubed minus 21 over 2x squared plus 30x minus 1 over 2. All we need is the value of f1 so that we can multiply that with this 3 over 2 to get the answer. So if you plug it in 1 to the x, then we will have now f of 1, this is equal to 1 minus 21 over 2 plus 30, and then minus 1 over 2. Okay, so negative 21 over 2 minus 1 over 2, that is negative 22 over 2, that is negative 11. Negative 11, then we have 31, so that's why this is now 20. So your f of 1 is now equal to 20. So the question is asking you a times f of 1. So that's why the answer for this question is now 3 over 2 times now 20. So cancel out. So the final answer for this question is now just 30. So 30 was the answer for this question. Okay, so pretty interesting calculus question. So I'll be back with more videos with more questions like this sometime soon.